Right, example two on page 210. So let me just put this here, page 210. Again, let me know if this is useful to have the video version or not, and which bits of the video, which bits can we improve on? Maybe it's this ramble at the beginning, or you watch the first bit and that's enough to get you going. Just something, let's go. Okay, so use the identity. Now, like an example one, you're not necessarily going to, in fact, you won't be told that. You need to know, okay, well, you know that tan theta equals sine theta over cos theta, and you know that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1 plus those other two variations, equals 1 minus 1 minus. And so you're just given this, 3 cos squared beta plus 5 sine beta equals 1. So 3 cos squared beta plus 5 sine beta equals 1. And I think the key in a lot of these is to think, how are you going to know where to go? So you're given that equation, and it's all very well to watch the video, see the example, you read through and it does something, but how do you know where to go with a question like this? And here's the hint. We've got a cos and a sine in the same question. Let's turn it into, let's manipulate our equation so that we just have one trigonometric ratio or function. So in the previous example, in example one, what we did was we saw sine and cos, so we manipulated it, so we just had tan theta. In this question, it's not going to work to divide by cos because this will become tan, but we'll still get a cos. We don't want to have two trigs, we want to have one. So in this case, we're going to use either of these to say, well, this cos squared we can turn the cos squared into sine squared using this. So we've manipulated this equation to go, okay, so we want to change the cos squared. So we've got cos squared theta, so we must have subtracted sine squared theta. So now we've got our variation. As I said before, it's useful if you had just written both variations, 1 minus cos squared theta, so you could just look at it and go, oh, cos squared, 1 minus sine squared. So we're going to write 3. But instead of cos squared, we're going to write 1 minus sine squared. Um, theta, beta, I say beta, although I think it should be beta. Okay, plus 5 sine beta equals 1. Now we've got it down to one trig ratio. Just sine, sine, it might be sine squared, but it's still just sine. There are no coses and tans. So from here, what do we do next and why? So I've got to jump into it. So from here, we've got a squared. So we've got a sine squared and a sine. So this makes us think of a quadratic equation. So we, when a quadratic equation is something like x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals 0, something like that. So let's do the same. Let's multiply this out so we can get a nicer looking equation. So we're going to multiply that in, and we're going to get 3. We're going to multiply the 3 in here, so 3 times that is minus 3 sine squared beta plus 5 sine beta equals 1. Let's simplify this a little bit, so we've got minus 3 sine squared, in fact, I'm simplifying, but again, why, 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 what, where are we going towards, and more importantly, how do I have an idea of where we're going towards? And how are you going to have an idea? That's the most important. So we've got this equation now. Now I think of a quadratic equation. So in the back of our minds, we've got quadratic equations because of the squared. That's the quadratic part, the squared part. So can you imagine I gave you an equation that said 3 minus 3x squared plus 5x equals 1. What would you do to this equation? How would you manipulate it so you could solve it? Well, the x squared, the quadratic part, would tell us that eventually we want to get it down to summing equals 0, so we can do some sort of bracket bracket equals 0, or a common factor. Basically, we want this equals 0, so that, so it would be that, so that we could have, we could factorize the left-hand side. So, uh, this thing is 
then that's a it might be a bracket bracket it might be a common factor but we know that we manipulate it so it equals zero so let's do that we've got minus 3 sine squared beta so I'm going to put all the squarey things first that's what we would have done here so in this example let's just run through the example with the x squared minus 3x squared plus 5x we've got a 3 we're going to subtract 1 from each side so minus 1 having a great time here minus 1 minus 1 so we'd have plus 2 equals 0 in other words we've rearranged it so we got everything equals zero and from here we would apply the quadratic formula or we'd go no it's easier if this were positive so we could multiply the whole thing by minus one so this is just 3x squared not plus but now minus 5x not plus 2 but minus 2 equals zero so either multiply the whole thing by minus one or rearrange so everything's on the right hand side and from there we could go bracket 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 well that must be 3x and x well, we need to get 2 so let's go for 1 and 2 so 1x minus 6x so 1x minus 6x plus 1 that would work and we'd have our two equations then so for a quadratic this is how we'd solve it and we'd have either that bracket equals 0 or that bracket x minus 2 equals 0 so x equals minus a third or x equals 2 right that's how we solve our quadratics and we're going to do the same idea here so minus 3 sine squared beta plus 5 sine beta so we're going the squares then none of the squares and then our constants Okay, multiply by negative because it will be easier to factorize. 3 sine squared beta minus 5 sine beta minus 2 equals 0. Okay, we see a squared, so we're going to factorize. It's just that we're factorizing with sines now. So we've got 3 sine beta sine beta. Sine beta is like our x. And then plus 1 plus 1 minus 2 so plus 1 times minus 2 gives us minus 2 plus 1 sine beta minus 6 sine beta gives us our minus 5 sine beta and 3 sine beta times sine beta gives us 3 sine squared beta so now we've got our two options either that bracket equals 0 or this bracket or sine beta equals minus 2 equals 0 so now we've got it down whew, to something that we can solve. So we've got this one here. So sine beta equals minus a third. Or for our other equation, sine beta equals 2. Great step. So we're going to solve each of these. Sine beta equals minus a third. So we're going to go, okay, great stuff. We're going to shift sine 1 over 3, and we're going to go through our procedure as we know from there. So we're going to go, okay, we've got our reference. Let's do it in blue here. So we've got our reference angle is shift sine of a third gives us 19,5 to one decimal place. Okay, let's go to our Cartesian plane. So Cartesian plane quickly, C A S T nineteen and a half is there, but sine beta was negative, so therefore we need to be down there or there. So we've got there or there. So from there we know that that's our reference angle. That must be and that must be. So theta equals one eighty plus nineteen comma five equals plus 180 equals whoopsie well 19 comma 5 right 199 comma 5 and then or theta equals for this one we're going 360 minus 360 minus 19 comma 5 
equals 340,5. Okay, so there are two options, and then we could add our 360. Okay. Okay, I've got K twice here. But we've done that general solution part. That's why I'm not spending too much time on it. Okay, so there's our one set of solutions. And our other solution is or sine beta equals 2. Now I'm going to do what some of you may do. Some of you may not do this, but I'm going to do this. Ah, so reference angle equals shift sine 2 equals, and what's going to happen? Do it, because I want you to get to this point if you haven't spotted it yet. Shift sine of 2, and it says math error. Now, when you do that, we realize, uh oh, let's, now we have to engage brain cell to go, what's happening? Well, math error, I've done something wrong. Mm -mm. I've done everything beautifully. Think of the sine graph. Here's our sine graph. Sine starts at zero and goes round and round, carries on there. What's the highest point that sine ever gets to? One. So it only goes between 1 and minus 1. So sine beta equals 2. There's no solution for this part. So for this part, there's no solution. So we pause on that one. And there's nothing else to do. This is the equivalent or a similar example. Can you imagine you got an equation that said x squared equals minus 2? You would have gone, wait, oh, so the square root, and you diligently go square root, square root, and you go, okay, so the square root of minus 2, and you go square root minus 2, math error, engage brain cell, summing squared equals negative, not in the real number system, so here yeah, you would have said no solution. So it's like that, where you're going, ah, oh, no, this bit didn't make sense. Okay, that's it, example 2. Um, as I said, I mean, I've purposely put this up not as an Ed puzzle, so you can let it play in the background, you can play it faster, you can skip to the sections that are more interesting or more challenging, and this is in our notes now on the site. Goodbye.